just when we're talking about video surveillance, I mean, I can imagine why it would be uh, appealing to uh, attackers, but are there certain aspects of it that make it particularly vulnerable? You have seen the movies, right? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> what you see in the movies is actually not that far from uh, from the real world. Mm. So uh, attacking the uh, the surveillance system is the first thing a criminal will do. The surveillance systems are in the front line. Do you feel like you're on the front line of, of a big threat, or, or what's it like when you're kind of on the ground? You can say that um, our customers put a huge amount of trust in, in Milestone because they use our software as a security control to make sure that, uh, that they can actually investigate criminal behavior on their premises uh, with, the, with the cameras and the video surveillance system. So, um, so yeah, I feel responsible for, for our customers' uh, uh, security, of course. Um. Do you feel like a, a movie star? You mentioned the, the movies. <laughs> nah, maybe not so much, but uh, can't help feel responsible for, for the well-being and the security of, uh, of our customers. Um, so if you were to look at the current landscape of, of cyber security, what do you think are some of the, the biggest threats uh, today? When I think about the, the top three, what, what immediately comes to my mind is ransomware and malware. I mean, we hear about it uh, every single day, more or less, uh, new uh, uh, ransomware attacks. And to some statistic even say that every 14 seconds, there is a, a new victim for, for ransomware attacks. The downtime you have in your business, rebuilding of all the systems, uh, etc. it has enormous financial impact. What about endpoint? I know that's also an yeah, issue. Yeah, endpoint security is also a, a, a huge thing as I see it, uh, because the, the way we have moved in the past 10, 15 years, where we have moved um, a lot from our on-premise system in closed networks, we are now, uh, everything is on the internet. Uh, we are using cloud services. We are using uh, remote workstations. We work from home. Um, we have a l- the, the attack surface has, has uh, dramatically increased over the past uh, many years. So, so I would say that is probably number two on two on my list. Mm. And on and the third is the very very good old phishing. Even though we have a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, uh, how to deal with it, uh, we train people, etc. But but it still just keeps coming. Mm. And just when you mention training, I mean, I imagine that's one uh, one method of, of trying to counter cybersecurity threats. But just in terms of Solutions. What are mm-hmm. some of the options that are available today? Yeah, when 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 it comes to to the solution, it's really a two edged sword, as I see it. There are two very 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 important factors. First of all, it is, and the most important one, security awareness, and uh, employee training. Though mm-hmm. that is the most important one. Then we have the second one, which is the security policies and and the technical controls we have in place. Maybe if we're looking at that in practice, if I'm an employee, say, mm-hmm. um, are there certain just good practices, just things that I should be doing in order to protect the organization and, and I guess, m- myself and my reputation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you need to be aware and you need to be skeptical when you look at the uh, at contents of, of mails to determine whether it is a phishing mail. And be aware of what links you click on. You you might be thinking that is that really right? Mm. And you need to have that common sense of, of of skepticism to to evaluate whether these actions you are asked to do are are sound or, or not. I know myself. I've sometimes you get like a, a text message, and mm. it comes from your bank. It looks mm. as though like it's with the same messages. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. How do they do that? Or do we know? <laughs> <laughs> and that there are many. Uh, I, I I don't think that this uh, we should go into all the technical details about this. But but you're absolutely right. The the um, uh, the, the phishing mails today can uh, can really look uh, uh, trustworthy when you look at them. Mm. But there are always uh, signs that will show they are scams. Th- these things like typos or. Yeah, but the typos actually is is uh, it's actually very deliberate that uh, you have read these weird spelled phishing mails. Yeah, and um, the reason why they put them in there is to uh, lure away 
the people who can actually, uh, you can say that uh, can actually recognize these kind of things immediately. So, so we have a, a, a people who can who will not fall into the traps because when when you start a phishing campaign, for example, or we also had these uh, scam calls. Uh, we have a different kind of things. Yeah, I've been where you are trying to lure people into something, then mm. you start up a dialogue, and then eventually you 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 get the trust of the of the victim. And then you can start exhaust for money, uh, etc. So, so the uh, the baddest spells uh, uh, is actually just to lure away those people who will never fall into the trap, anyways. Okay. So, so that is very very targeted. It is not uh, 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 because those are who are creating these uh, uh, phishing mails are bad at writing. So that is very deliberate. <laughs> okay, right. That makes me feel a little bit better that I managed <laughs> to spot them. Um, you mentioned about. Sp- uh, was it called spear phishing? This is where you're t- specifically. This email looks like it come from the CTO uh, to the, to the PA. Please immediately transfer some money to some account because we are closing a big deal or we are in. And please, it's uh, always urgent. Yes, yeah, it's very yeah, uh, yeah. urgent. But but this about uh, uh, the spear phishing part is about where you you you, you mention specific names and, and you make it look like specific people. Mm. And I mean, can how? much can this escalate is it just they'll keep piling the pressure on or that they use multiple methods of, of trying to lure someone they're trying new method methods uh, uh, all the time of course yeah. so um and and there are actually lying a lot of uh, 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 research behind or you can say information gathering uh, uh, behind these kind of, of spear fist atta- uh, attacks where the attackers really uh, uh, do a lot of information gathering around the company and the people in there uh, uh, to make these these phishing attacks as legitimate looking as possible so uh, okay so it's uh, the opposite of of the typos they're looking yeah, that is the, the opposite of yeah, the typos yeah. yes yes we started this conversation talking about the rise in in ransomware you mentioned mm-hmm. as, as one of the areas of threats just in terms of uh, your take on this kind of Slightly uh, maybe controversial or questionable area. Mm. There's always the question when you're under attack as a company, you're being asked to pay a ransom. Mm. The money is probably not going to be going to to good Mm. use. What's your take on this situation? The the approach should be, in my opinion, that you invest heavily into preventing the situation for occurring in the first place and making sure that if you are hit when you're hit that it has the minimum amount of uh, of damage inc- it can do mm. and there are procedures there are best practices in place for that the problem is that of course it costs money it costs a lot of money to have these kind of plans disaster recovery plans business continuity plans and and, and all these kind of of uh, of how to react when disaster hits you it costs a lot of money and it is easy to cut on that budget and say, ah, it probably works well. Okay, let's uh, let's see, uh, because you don't get immediate, uh, uh, you can say, um, uh, return of investment on 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 money spent on security. You only get it when you are you are attacked, of course. Mm. So um, okay. so that would be my uh, approach to this, and also because when 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 organization are not properly secured and do not properly have these uh, plans to uh, to um, to limit the damage done and 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 ideally prevent it it is also just uh, uh, encouraging these uh, criminal guys to uh, to do more ransomware attacks um because when when there is a market for criminal activities of course it will it will continue to be there yeah so um so we won't get this solved uh, until um, companies, uh, organizations um, actually make it uh, a, a bad business to be a, a, a ransomware yeah. uh, attacker. And prevention is, is prevention crucial. Prevention is yeah. the, uh, the the best way uh, yeah. to do this, yeah. Um, Carson, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for joining okay. me today. Thank you for having me. It has been a pleasure. Thank you very much.